let's do a little video on uh, assembling the Uber grinder. This is what we're gonna end up with um, when we're most of the way done. There's still no motor mounted to it. There's no VFD mounted to it. Um, but the, the main assembly that you'll need to do right out of the box before you put the motor and VFD on is uh, what we'll go through today. So you're gonna have to bolt this arm up and add this knob. That knob's uh, doesn't really serve a big purpose if you're using the, the air. But if you're using a gas spring instead of this cylinder, then uh, you use this to compress things. Um, we're going to have to add the, the air system to it. That'll be one of the, the final steps. And here's what the air system looks like. There's a, a flow control valve here, a flow control valve here, and uh, your main valve here. The, the main thing to pay attention to is that all the arrows for the air are flowing the, the right direction. Um, this doesn't have to necessarily mount this way. Everything's just kind of sitting on here now. As a matter of fact, it's not even um, it's not even bolted on tight. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. If I was mounting this myself on a on a pedestal like this, I might stick an elbow here so that this is pointed down, and I don't have a hose sticking out further and a, a big old thing of you know leverage here. So you can plumb it however you want. I've provided you enough to at least get an airline to it. But again, you might want to change it. If you're mounting to a, to a bench, then this can go, you know, any old place. You can put this down on your bench somewhere, wherever you want. Um, but if it's a freestanding unit on a pedestal like I'm doing here, then everything becomes self-contained. Same with this. This is the VFD mount. So there's three bolts you'll have to do. To bolt it down onto here and now your VFD one of the KBAC drives will mount on here um, one of the cool things about that is let's grab another one here if you were mounting this to a bench instead of a pedestal it doesn't have to mount that way that way works on the pedestal but let's pretend we we're mounting it to a bench we could actually do it with it sticking up and facing us this way and the the KBAC will still mount there. So you could have this remotely on your bench screwed down, you know, just grab some screws and screw it down and it'll still work and it'll still hold your VFD. So this works for either way. And it's the same with the air. You can mount the air, you know, remotely as well. There should be enough hose to uh, reach from wherever you want to go. You know, if you had it mounted out here somewhere on a, on a bench, um, you just got to get hose from there to there. The way these flow controls work, this controls your speed on how fast uh, you, you apply tension. So if you just throw your valve, I, I would cut this thing off myself, um, but it's theirs now. So if you were to throw this valve wide open with a hundred and something pounds of pressure on here, this thing's gonna, this thing's gonna slam up, wham. And you don't necessarily want that. So with this flow control here, you get to control how quickly that happens. This one on the valve does the same thing. You adjust it and it controls how fast it comes down when you, when you release the valve. So you want it to you know, come down slowly and not slam down. So anyhow, that's a little bit about the air, which is uh, really the last thing that, that you'll do, but it's all there right now, so it's easy to explain. Um, Look at the way these are mounted on here. And there's some options depending on, on how you like it. But this is pointed with this part forward. The same up there. And if we look, there's a series of holes. Because different people are going to like to tension things different ways. So the way that mounts is uh, there's one hole visible up there. That's the way I like to mount it. This heim joint just goes in there and gets centered up. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the angle here. I'm not. But when you put the when you put the air cylinder into the bracket here, you'll see there's a there's a washer. And I put one washer inside there and there, and that's to make up for. If you actually look at the at the the air cylinder, do I have one out? I do, but not right here. If you look at the air cylinder, the air cylinder has a, 
going to stop focusing. There's a bushing protruding through the cylinder because when I buy these joints, they're, uh, the hole's too big. So I push a bushing into them and the bushing sticks out further on one side than the other. We'll just stick the, the washer in the same way. So if you've got your, if you've got your uh, bushing protruding on this side, we'll stick a washer on this side inside the thing and then you just tighten up those screws and your cylinders there none of this is rocket surgery none of it really matters a whole lot you can you, you can't really do it wrong providing the providing the bolts in there this thing's going to work doesn't really matter if it's if it's tight in there or not i just like to be keep everything zeroed and centered um what else can i point out when you're initially setting up this machine you want to set it up so that your tracking plate here is parallel to this so basically it's a uh, it's flush it doesn't it's not angled this way it's not angled like that the other way so I basically get it dialed in there and uh, that gets me my initial center for centering everything up um, once you get the motor and everything there the motor will stick out on on here and what you want to do to set your motor to set your wheel height this way is uh, get a quarter inch drill or something and if you lay a quarter inch drill here and then push your motor push your wheel up and, until it touches that quarter inch wheel that's the right gap so that you're you've got your wheel set the correct way this direction once you do that and you've got the the flat platen we'll say on it you can start adjusting for your tracking and everything. Um, and if it doesn't track centered when this is when this is parallel and your wheel's sticking out a quarter inch and you've got a flat platen in here, there's a sneaky little screw that's inside this hole. And uh, it's reached via a little Allen wrench. I think it's a eighth inch Allen wrench, but I could be mistaken. Anyhow. That reaches in there and grabs a hold of that screw. And inside of here, uh, you can't really see it, but inside of there is a plastic tipped set screw. And what that does is this does a couple of things. One of them is if this arm wasn't here, when you rotated this to horizontal, there's so much weight here that this whole thing kind of sags and it throws off your tracking. So this is here to keep it from sagging. When we rotate this thing, when we rotate this thing over 90 degrees and it's now a horizontal grinder, that keeps it from sagging. Um, and messing up your tracking, you would just have to adjust your tracking a bunch. So once you've got it on there and you've got a belt running, the, the whole thing's running, say it's, you, you find your belt is off center on your, on, on your platen, you can adjust that screw in or out until you've got it balanced and now your wheels run and now your belts running nice and straight and if it's like I said if it's not you adjust that get it nice and balanced now when you pull this pin and rotate over 90 degrees it'll stay so you'll you should theoretically have the same tracking in vertical and horizontal or at least really close to where you have to do just the most minor of adjustments right there um what else is there on the running of this thing there's there's screw holes on both sides depending on where it's comfortable for you and how you're going to use it most um, for tightening up your arms something people never catch and is important on these things is uh that these arms are adjustable like right now it wants to it wants to run in there well, once you've got the spot and you're and, and you've got it where everything's centered up, this thing actually pulls out, and, and you can rotate it. So that, let's say we we'll put an arm in there. There we go. We got a small wheel. So we get a small wheel in there, and that's the tight spot. We'll say I don't like it being tight there. I can pull it out and now it rotates over to there. So let's pretend that's where it got tight. Oh shit, that's not a good spot. Well, we can pull it out and put it there. And now it's always 
gonna tighten up there so we can loosen it. And in that way you can keep these things from uh, ever interfering with each other by getting them, you know, when they're located right so that they're tight in the right spot. The other thing, is there's another one down here that uh, tightens it into position when it's actually where you want it. If you want to keep it in the vertical position all the time, you tighten that up and it makes the whole machine a little more rigid. When you want to rotate it, you loosen that. I'm not going to be able to do this with, with one hand, but now you pull this pin. So we had a glitch in the, in the recording there. But anyhow, now it's horizontal. And again, you can just reach back in there and tighten this up or loosen this up. And if it's tight, it makes the whole machine a whole lot more rigid. I'm not bolted down to the ground. But when you're bolted, um, it makes the whole machine a little more rigid by, by tightening that up. So we can loosen that. Pull this pin out and it helps to use two hands so you actually pull a little bit of weight off especially once there's a motor on it this whole thing gets a little heavy so you wiggle it a little bit you yank that pin and it'll rotate back up 90 degrees so there's the machine in its horizontal configuration <coughs> without the motor or vfd mounted um, this is obviously set up you know, in the wrong spot you would actually set this up that way with your small wheel in it and uh then your work rest can go in here one of the reasons for three receivers is when you're horizontal you generally want the work rest in the, the left side but when you're when you're vertical you want the work rest beneath you so you, you yank the work rest and, and move it over there so you can move from vertical to horizontal with uh, just one little thumb screw here to adjust your your uh, working system and uh, everything you're, you're in business everything's good so that's the grinder in a nutshell and now i'll set this up and uh we'll go through the assembly procedure that you should have to do when when you get it when it comes out of the box